Welcome to the Charleston CFO Council. This organization was co-founded in 2015 by Robert Bendetti and Mark Carmichael in order to provide a networking and educational forum for senior financial executives to share best practices, to discuss current financial issues, and to learn about current topics related to the performance of their job. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? I am fabulous. How are you? I am also fabulous. Thank you for being so flexible and relocating. Tracy had the most fabulous outdoor setting set for us to see, and it was awesome, except for it was causing a little bit of video problems. So she pivoted. She's so agile, and now we're in the office. So thank you. Well, we're all in a season of uh, being agile and flexible and adjusting, right? So. Amen. Amen. Well, Tracy Clifford is the president of aptly named Tracy Clifford Consulting. Uh, before that, senior financial executive uh, for many years, at, and this is pretty interesting, broad spectrum of companies where you were controller or CFO or VP. I saw healthcare, I saw athletics, pharmaceuticals, tech, energy, it's just about everything. And uh, you have a, your undergrad in accounting from the College of Charleston, is that correct? Indeed, I was a cougar. And then you got your MBA from the second best college in the state of Georgia, Georgia State. Indeed, not, yep. Not quite as awesome as the Kennesaw State University, but my uh, my wife <laughs> would be very excited. She's a Georgia State grad. A uh, What do you guys like, the Pumas or the Tigers or the... Um, you know, I'm embarrassed to say llamas. I do not know. I don't know, who cares? Kennesaw is the owls, that's what's important. And you're a certified public accountant. And one thing I was impressed with, Tracy, and I'm totally not reading any of it, super long list, you're like a super volunteer, civic and community organizations, really, really impressed, board, volunteer, all levels. But one I thought was really cool is Turning Leaf Project. That sounds super cool. And it appears to be where people learn new skills so they can re-enter the workforce after maybe having a bad spell, made some bad decisions when they were younger and they need to turn a new leaf, boom, turning leaf project. Exactly, um, it's great. I love turning leaf. It is a, a, a super organization on trying to reduce recidivism um, in Charleston and trying to, to help guys coming out of prison deal with conflict management and um, problem solving skills, a lot of social skills in that that they, they didn't get when they were growing up. Well, let's get into it. Tracy, question number one. What is the best business book or your favorite business book and why? All right, well, I actually brought a uh, actual prop so you can see it. Um, my favorite book, and, and I don't really know if it's classified as a business book, I think it is, but it, it's, is beneficial all across, not just for business. It's called Presence. It's by Amy Cuddy. And um, it's my my favorite business book because um, of what the tagline can really explain it. The tagline on the book is bringing your boldest self to your biggest challenges. And it was impactful to me when I read it. Um, and I think I found out about it reading People Magazine, believe it or not. It was, it was one of the uh, books profiled in there many years ago. But I feel like having been a, a corporate financial executive at publicly traded companies and being in the boardroom over the last 20 years in various capacities, whether it be as a financial officer or as a board member, um, you know, women do have a challenge in how they assert themselves and, and making sure that they're heard and respected for their experience and their, their educational knowledge. And this book was really important because it really taught you ways you can use your body language and your voice inflection and your facial expressions and lots of different things all the way down to, you know, what you wear and how that presents to other people. So that's why I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it because it can also help in parenting and negotiating home life, whether you're trying to get a loan or, um, you know, buy real estate or whatever it might be. I think it's a super valuable book. So that is awesome, and I almost forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> that, was, that was that delay. Uh, question number two. That was poor presence on my part, basically, is what I just said. Uh, <laughs> 
Question number two is what is the best advice that you've ever received? Gotcha. Um, well, it didn't originally come to me as advice. It came to me as a directive. Um, when I was a youngster in my career, um, I think I was around 19 or 20, um, and, and this was, was directed at me, so it wasn't necessarily advice, but I took it as advice and it's been very valuable, which is really take responsibility for your missteps and your mistakes. Um, you know, don't make excuses. Don't look around and try to blame somebody else or your circumstances or whatever it might be. Um, because if, if you made a mistake or a misstep, just accept it and use the time you would try to blame someone else or explain yourself away to resolve whatever occurred. Um, that, that's time well spent. It's been my experience that the repercussions of owning your own mistakes is much less stressful than hoping your mistakes won't cause an issue, like trying to cover them up or, you know, not, um, not bring them to the forefront or trying to point your finger away from yourself. Um, has, has much greater repercussions than just saying, hey, this is what happened, I screwed up, here's what I'm thinking about how to resolve it, but I'd like your input. Um, you know, I always tell my employees when, whenever they make mistakes or, or, you know, have errors in financial statements or whatever it might be, as well as my two college-age sons, when you immediately take responsibility for something, it, it shifts the power from the other person your boss or your parent or whomever it might be, your spouse, it, it doesn't matter. Um, it shifts the power from them back to you because you've just owned it and now you're, now you're just going to move forward. And so they don't have the ability to yell at you about what happened because you've already taken ownership for it or, you know, finding something that you didn't bring to the forefront and accusing you of why didn't you tell me about this already if you knew it because you already did it. So I think that change in the, in the power is huge. And it came to me because I worked for a very large man back when I was 19 or 20 in college in an internship. I was a contract administrator and he was feared. He was always shouting at someone um, and, and literally people would cower, even, even the, the older men and smaller men and didn't matter, they would cower. And one day I made a mistake and um, he, you know, was yelling at me and I was saying, but, 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 and I was trying to, you know, point the finger away from me. And he just said, you know, I don't want to hear it. Quit, own it and let's move on. It's, you know, we know what happened. Now let's deal with it, you know. And literally, I have remembered that for my entire life. And that was 20 years, 20 plus years ago, 30 years ago now. So I'm aging myself, but it was good advice, even though it was given That's me good. in the context of advice. It was painful at the time, but it's great. Well, it's good to, you learned a valuable lesson, even though maybe it was projected, it was presented to you in a poor way, you turned it around and took something out of it. That's good. That's good. Question number three is, what is a new habit you've recently started doing or a new tool you've recently started using that you have found beneficial? Yeah. So I'm sure probably 99% of the folks you would talk to right now that typically have meetings are using Teams. I know we're doing WebEx today, but um, I, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of video. I hate the way I look on video, so I prefer not to use video conference calls. I'm sure most women feel that way, but um, I've had to use Teams because I feel like it's imp important to have that audio, I mean, the video connection, not just the audio connection while we're in a position that we can't see people. and. Um, I do think there's a different connection when you can see them than when you're on the phone. So I started using Teams and I love it. Um, I, you know, I think it's a, a great tool and it's probably saving a lot of us right now um, in, in the business world. And the other tool that I've been using for a little while, but I really like is called Monday.com. Um, you know, we always look for those of us that are that multitask a million different things, of course, are always looking for tools that can help us uh, set our priorities and get things done in the timelines that we want to get them done. And um, so I happened up on Monday.com and it's fairly affordable. There's a lot of tools out there, but I find them to be more too expensive for somebody like me than, you know, practice by myself with just one full-time employee. But Monday is great and it's really simple to use. So if you're looking for project management or task management or something just kind of keep you, keep your priorities in line, I highly suggest Monday.com. That's cool. I've never heard of that before. I'm going to check that out. Good job, Tracy, yeah, bringing something not. new. 
it doesn't really get a lot of promotion. I'm surprised. There's a lot of other tools that do, but it doesn't. So, Question number four is what is the best part of your current job? So, um, you know, I worked in corporate America as a CFO, as a chief accounting officer for many years. And um, back in May of 2015, I decided to go out on my own and really take everything I had learned from all the experiences um, in the public domain um, and, and try to fill gaps for other companies. So, so I, I am my own boss. Um, I like to say, I like to say, um, you know, that so-and-so won't let me off tomorrow. Oh, that's me, you know. So um, it doesn't mean that you don't work just as hard or even harder when you're self-employed, but I, I am the master of my own domain in how I schedule my work. So whether I work till two in the morning and sleep in, or, you know, I go do things with my family and then have to work, you know, over the weekend, at least I can control my own schedule. So that's, um, that's something that I really love about it, as well as just the variation, you know, working um, for publicly traded companies for many years, you kind of get into the rut of the SEC cycle and it can be very monotonous. And so now I have, you know, a public company, I have a couple of private companies um, in differing industries. So I, I meet lots of people and I'm always learning something different because I'm interacting with so many different um, people and, and their needs are so different. Sometimes their needs are operational, sometimes they're process improvement, and then sometimes, of course, they're my, my key bailiwick, which is financial, um, you know, financial management instruction. So, so yeah, I love, I love all of that, the flexibility, the variation, all the people and all the industries and learning things all the time. What is something personal you'd like to share that maybe we don't know about you? Um, well, um, I, I'll first answer a question that I wasn't prepared to answer, but no, I don't play the guitar. So, so un unfortunately, my personal um, thing that no one knows is no, I don't have a hidden guitar talent. Those are uh, belong to members of my family. But um, I think kind of going back to something that you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, um, I really do have a heart for service. And so one of the reasons that I went out on, in my own business was to have um, the ability to kind of also use that platform <clears throat> to make contributions and um, kind of provide mentoring more than anything on helping folks that are kind of in the 18 to 30 age group. Big, if they're if they're you know facing certain challenges like going back to the turning leaf guys, but um, you know maybe they just lived under the poverty line or they didn't have the opportunity to go to college and they just don't know how to get to the next step. They don't have transportation, so they're relying on um, transportation. And here in the city of Charleston, you know, it, public transportation is really tough. So if you're relying on that to get to and from a job, oftentimes, you know, it's it's not going to work out for you. So. Um, one thing I've been working on for a while, and um, it was a goal in 2019, and I got part of the way there, and um, just because of demands of my business, I didn't get the rest of the way there, but is I want to create a 501c3 that does focus on that age group and, and would take all the funding that we get into the organization for the focus of getting those individuals to the next step. And what I mean by that is um, like a used car, for example. I've, I've personally purchased four used cars for different people um, on my own. I want to try to get, and without tax deductibility, unfortunately. So I would like to have a 501c3 established so that folks that want to do the same thing and have a passion for that, there's a lot of charities that help kids. But then once they age out, they're, you know, they graduated from high school, people say, oh, they're adults, they need to take care of themselves. Well, if they never really had the proper platform and foundation when they were kids, they certainly aren't gonna have it at 18 plus. So that's, that's why I have a passion for that particular age group. Um, and, and I do just think that our expectations of what they can accomplish when they haven't had that are a little unfair. So I've got the 501c3 formed and I filed it with the state of South Carolina, but I have not yet filed it with the IRS because I got hung up on the narrative, right? Because you have to, you have to explain your business purpose in very kind of narrow terms so that you can stay on target. And my attorney has been very great in trying to counsel me in that way. Um, but I just haven't, I haven't gotten it to the point that I think it's, 
exactly what I want. So um, I've named my board and all that, but that's really kind of the one thing I think is, um, you know, find what you want to be your legacy when you get to kind of 25 years in your career, kind of where I am, um, and, and focus on that because it's really rewarding. That's fantastic. And what a great mission and uh, of an organization. So thanks for sharing that. That's fantastic. Tracy, last question, question number six, what is something that I didn't ask that I should have asked? And what's your answer to that? Um, well, I guess this would not have been the same question that I would have suggested um, in January or maybe even February, but I would say probably what everyone um, is talking about is, you know, how are individual people impacted by this whole COVID-19 thing um, and, and how is their business impacted? And I'm super fortunate because to, to right now, to this date, um, my clients have um, been strong and um, I'm still getting paid and, um, you know, we have been successful in getting the PPP loans um, so that that has been certainly a huge blessing. Um, so what I'm trying to do is figure out ways I can sprinkle that wherever I can. So I love the tipping app. Every time I literally drink a cup of coffee or have a cocktail on Friday afternoon or whatever it might be, um, I try to go on that little tipping app that came out from the restaurant industry and tip somebody five bucks or 10 bucks or whatever it is. And um, we're trying to eat out at least twice a week and spend a lot of money, more than we would normally spend. But, um, you know, like yesterday, I'll give a shout out to Rare Bit downtown on King Street because that was our choice yes, uh, for this past week. Um, because I think they're really struggling. And, and being from Charleston originally, I'm passionate about the entertainment and food and, you know, hospitality industry here. I go to lots of concerts. I've already had two rescheduled that I have tickets to. Um, so I'm, I'm really hopeful that all of that will come back in some way, shape or form soon. And I'm just trying to do my part right now to support whatever platform they have operating right now. That's fantastic. And it's, it's fun. It's important uh, because the tourism is a, a really important uh, industry here in Charleston and everywhere. But it's also important because, and I know from working my way through college waiting tables is that a lot of the people that work in the hospitality industry are the turning leaf kind of folks. You know, they're trying to maybe they made absolutely joint, and so they're trying to pivot, and so they're the hardest hit. And so, if you can, if you can, if you if your family can afford to go out, it, it it's uh, it's get some takeout. It's uh, you get to get a blessing of food, and you're giving a blessing of a job. And so, uh, we did something fun in the Bedetti household and did like a barbecue tour and called all the places that were in driving distance that were open selling barbecue. And every couple, three days, we'd get going out and get some barbecue food and just sort of had kind of a fun Bendetti barbecue bash kind of thing. And so uh, I like your idea, That's Tracy. That's a great idea. Yeah, and, it, and now uh, a point of information, we're all fat right now. Uh, everything I own is tight. So. <laughs> I, I think I probably could have made some wiser uh, side dish choices. I don't need to, I don't know. I don't think I needed to eat that much macaroni and cheese. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we were giving back to the community, I guess. Um, I think we're all rocking the elastic waisted pants right now. So that's, okay. that's true. Tracy, this was awesome. I love the book, Presence. I got to totally check that out. I have not read that one. And Monday.com. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm going to be checking that out. Uh, but great, great notes on service and helping others. There's a theme there. I know you got a passion just looking and, and, and doing some research on you on the civic organizations and the community organizations that you're a member of. You're super active. So it's a pleasure getting to talk to you and learn more about you. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, Have a great day.